Welcome to lesson two, writing introductions. So first of all, an introduction does several different things. As you can see, it introduces the book, the author, and the characters you'll be discussing. The other thing it does is it provides enough background information that anyone could pick up your paper and understand what you are going to be discussing. This means someone could pick it up off the street, and if they chose to, they could read your paper and understand exactly what you are going to be discussing. Finally, what the essay, excuse me, what the introduction needs to do is it must showcase your thesis statement. You will end your introduction with a clearly worded thesis that tells your reader exactly what you are going to prove. Now, that thesis statement is a promise. If you tell me you are going to prove that, then by the end of the essay, you must prove that, because your thesis promised me it would. Now, like we learned in Lesson 1, every thesis statement is found by answering a thesis question, or, as we might otherwise know a thesis question as, the prompt. Teachers are always giving us prompts for essays. And what a prompt is, is really just a complicated question that takes time to find an answer. So, in our hypothetical situation, a teacher gives us this prompt. In The Hobbit, what compels Bilbo Baggins to leave his home? Why does he do it? Now, I don't have an answer to this question. Yet. And the key word is yet. So I have to ask myself, where can I find this answer? Now, like any good reader, I go back to the book and I start hunting for information. And again, this takes time, but it will help you find your answer. So, this page gives me the first instance in which Bilbo leaves the Shire. However, he doesn't know why exactly. Now look at the following information right here. The dwarves have already left his home. Gandalf informs him that they have left him behind. And it says, in the middle of the page, To the end of his days, Bilbo could never remember how he found himself outside, without a hat, a walking stick, or any money, or anything that he usually took when he went out. Leaving his second breakfast half-finished and quite unwashed up, pushing his keys into Gandalf's hands and running as fast as his fury feet could carry him down the lane, past the great mill, across the water, and then on for a mile or more. Now, does this information tell me anything at all? And the answer is, yes, it does. This decision for Bilbo is an impulsive one. And knowing what I know about Bilbo, Bilbo is not impulsive at all. He spends the majority of his days in his lawn, smoking his pipe, stocking his pantries with food, or thinking about breakfast, or his second breakfast, or his third breakfast. He is not an impulsive character. So why would he leave? So, Bilbo made an impulsive decision. So I have to go back here and think about what do I actually know about Bilbo? So I go back to the text. And here is what I find. What I do notice, looking at where Bilbo lives in the Shire, he has everything he has ever needed. Pantries and bedrooms and bathrooms and rooms devoted to clothes and dining rooms. He is a very comfortable hobbit. And if I know anything, people that are comfortable are not typically impulsive. And if I read further, this is what I find later on. This hobbit was a very well-to-do hobbit. And he lived in a neighborhood of the hill for time out of mind. And people considered them, meaning the Baggins, very respectable. Not only because most of them were rich, but they never had any adventures or did anything unexpected. And that is key. What Bilbo does when he leaves is unexpected. So we're still searching for the answer. Why did he leave? 
Now, I'm still investigating the text. And this is very, very useful because I'm getting closer to my answer. So, we know that Bilbo is a Baggins, and his father, Bungo, was a rich Baggins. And he inherited, Bilbo I mean, Bilbo inherited his nice home from his father. However, what about his mother's side of the family? What about the other side of his heritage? So, his mother was the famous Belladonna Took, one of the three remarkable daughters of the old Took. And, if we keep reading, what we discover about her was that there was not something entirely hobbit-like about them. And once in a while, members of the Took clan would go and have adventures. They discreetly disappeared, and the family hushed it up. But the fact remained that the Tooks were not respectable as the Bagginses, though they were undoubtedly richer. Now, we found something. This is huge, because people that go on adventures, they are impulsive. They are willing to take risks, very much like what Bilbo does when he leaves the Shire for the first time. Also, if we keep reading further, here's what we see. And Tolkien hints at this. Remember, it's a very, very difficult thing for our protagonist to leave quickly without giving us any information as to why. So look here. Still, it is probably the Bilbo, her only son, although he looked and behaved exactly like a second edition of his solid and comfortable father, got something a bit queer in his makeup from the Took side, something they only waited for a chance to come out. This is it. So what we need to do is we need to keep our eyes out for more information about Bilbo's Took heritage. So here is what you just missed. I've been skimming around the text, and what just happened in a really, really funny moment is that Bilbo is listening to the dwarves sing their song of their past, and he hears about the dragon smog, and he gets so, so bent out of shape that he actually passes out on the floor and screams, struck by lightning, struck by lightning, and he faints from the fear, the fear of imagining himself on an adventure. Now, here's where we're at. After a while, after recovering from passing out, he decides to wake up and sneak back in and listen to the dwarves speak. And after a while and a drink, he crept nervously to the door of the parlor. And this is when he heard Gloin speaking. And what we know is that he is tempted by this. He is very, very tempted by the idea of getting involved in an adventure. And what we have is Gloin is speaking, and he says, As soon as I clapped my eyes on the little fellow bobbing and puffing on the mat, I had my doubts. He looks more like a grocer than a burglar. And this is where we see such a dramatic shift in Bilbo Baggins. Listen. Then, Mr. Baggins turned the handle and went in. The Took side had won. He suddenly felt he would go without bed and breakfast to be thought fierce. As for the little fellow bobbing on the mat, it almost made him really fierce. So what has happened? Well, they've insulted him. The dwarves have insulted him. They said that he is only a Baggins. He is only a Baggins. But he knows he is much more than a Baggins. He is a Took. So as we look at this section more and more, Bilbo is growing more aware of the dwarves' mission. They're going back to take their gold and treasure back from the dragon smog. So what we see here is after Bilbo is listening to them, he feels the desire of the hearts of the dwarves. Then something tookish woke up inside him, and he wished to go and see the great mountains and hear the pine trees and the waterfalls and explore the caves and wear a sword instead of a walking stick. Now, this sword, this sword is new. This is something that he doesn't carry around with him every day. Bilbo goes on walks, thus the walking stick. But after a while... He realizes that even though this fantasy is appealing, it's so great, 
he is still scared of the danger that lurks outside of the Shire. And he shudders. And very quickly, he was playing Mr. Baggins, a bag end underhill again. Okay, so I'm ready to make a hypothesis. I'm ready to make a rough draft of my thesis statement. Remember, my thesis statement is simply an answer to the question that I was researching in the first place. So, after all this hunting, after going back through the text and trying to find as much information about Bilbo as I can, my best hypothesis is that Bilbo is attempting to bridge the gap between his two vastly different families. That's my idea. Now, I've already written an introduction to this essay that I'm about to write. So, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and read this very first paragraph. Notice that my thesis will be the last sentence in the first paragraph. All right. Did you pause it? Good. Now, remember, what does an excellent introduction do? Well, if you've forgotten, here it is again. An excellent introduction introduces you to the book, author, and characters, provides enough background information that anyone could pick it up and understand it, and it puts a clearly worded thesis at the end of your introduction. So, let's look again. Now here's what you're going to notice. In the beginning of this introduction, I spend a lot of time carefully giving you all the information that you would need to understand Bilbo as a Baggins. Because remember, my paper, in my paper, I'm telling you that Bilbo is not at peace with himself. And since he's been a Baggins for quite some time, I need to tell you what a Baggins is. And I do that here in this first section. Now, this next bit is important. I call this a U-turn introduction. As you see, after my background information, I use the word yet. I say, yet, despite all of this, meaning despite all of Bilbo's comfort, he leaves on a quest he is completely unprepared for, and one that almost certainly guarantees a gruesome death. Now, the question is, why would he do this? And of course, I'm leading you to my thesis statement. I have an answer to this question, and I need to tell you this. And this is when I start building towards my thesis statement. I say that Bilbo decides to abandon his home because he has realized that comfort is not everything. His Baggins nature is not everything. Therefore, he leaves in order to fill the longings of his Took heritage, the adventurous side he has long since hidden away from himself. Remember, it took the dwarves and their arrival at his home to awaken this Took side. And finally, here it is, my thesis statement, my theory as to why Bilbo leaves home. I now have to prove this. My thesis statement is, Bilbo's exit from the Shire, his home, and his safety is a sign that he is seeking a way to make peace with the two halves of himself, no matter the cost. Now again, let's quickly talk about the power of the U-turn introduction. What I say and how I set you up to understand my introduction, is that people think that Bilbo is just a comfortable little hobbit. That's how we all think of Bilbo. Yet, despite all this, that yet, despite that U-turn, leaves me an opening to explain something to you. Essentially what a U-turn does is it says, everyone thinks this, however, I think something different different. I have a new thought to tell you, and that's what teachers want to see.